To help our users and potential users get most of the field, we are introducing this series of webinars dedicated to the different applications of Kikfield software. This is the first webinar from this series, and I'm glad to introduce uh, you, our old user and very knowledgeable expert, Richard Ness, who will tell you about Kikfield analysis for high voltage applications. Thank you very much, Vladimir, for the introduction, and welcome to the webinar on quick field and high voltage applications. My name is Richard Ness, and I have a background of over 25 years in pulse power and high voltage work. Approximately half of that was uh, doing government defense oriented work at what was known as Maxwell Laboratories. Projects there included a number of different state of the art areas, including a half megawatt average power, 60 kilohertz solid state modulator with a six kilovolt output, a 350 kilowatt average power 600 kV thyrotron modulator, and you're looking at the photograph of that specific system right now. On the left is the high voltage power supply and resonant charging system. The center has four parallel pulse forming networks that are used to generate the 10 microsecond wide pulse, and then that feeds into an oil tank with a 1 to 16 step up transformer to get the 600 kV output voltage. Uh, in addition to that, I also worked on a number of compact megavolt class pulse generator systems there. The second half of my career was involved with a, a commercial application at a company called Symer doing Exmer lasers. They produce Exmer lasers for one specific application, and that's semiconductor photolithography. The laser in this course, in this case, is, is the light source that makes the integrated circuits that forms the patterns on the circuits. And the pulse power systems for these Exmer lasers ranged from rep rates of 1 kilohertz to 6 kilohertz, with outputs ranging from 15 to 45 kV. Since the year 2000, virtually all of these laser systems uh, were MOPA configurations requiring two parallel pulse power systems. And the timing synchronization of these had to be better than one to two nanoseconds. And what you're looking at on the screen now is a, is a brochure from Symer. This shows one of the recent MOPA laser systems. And the size of this is roughly a little bit larger than two refrigerators standing next to each other. So you get an idea of how big these are. There are now over 3,400 of these laser systems including 5,000 pulse power modules, and they operate 24-7 around the world, making semiconductor devices for virtually everyone in the industry. And since Symer has a 70 to 80% market share, there's a very high chance that chips inside something within your reach right now, whether it's a computer, cell phone, iPod, etc., were produced using a Symer laser. So that just gives you a little bit of idea of my background. At the present time, I'm now self-employed with my own company, Ness Engineering Incorporated, and I do consulting work and take on small development and manufacturing projects. If you want more interested on in my capabilities and backgrounds, you can visit my website, and you can see um, one of the pages right here, uh, and the address is www.nessengr.com. So I have a fairly broad background as you can see, in pulse power and high voltage technology. Again, the, pro the projects were often state-of-the-art at the time. The output voltages or operating voltages ranged from 1,000 volts to up over a megavolt. And so in these types of projects, it's very important to know and predict the electric fields in advance of building something. Uh, you need to avoid insulation breakdowns and failures and these can be quite costly at the implementation phase when you already have hardware either in production or testing. So that brings us to Quickfield. I can um, say that I have experience with several different FEA packages, and as Vladimir mentioned, Quickfield is, is definitely the easiest to learn and, the, and to be able to produce data the quickest. So given that, what we want to talk about today is how to use Quickfield for high voltage applications. And although I'm going to be using the electrostatics module, many of the things and tools I discuss are applicable to the other modules, too. There are two different modes of setting up uh, problems in Quickfield. One is a, is a plain parallel problem 